Irish guy and Euro 2024 is on the horizon. And England fans are thinking, no, not even thinking. They are convinced that they are winning the whole thing. And spoilers, you're not. Well, as to get into the mood for the weirdness of an international tournament, I am going to look through every team who has qualified for the competition so far and just single out the weirdest person who they have on their coaching staff or management team. People that you would not have expected in a million years to have the job they currently have. Trust me. These are strange. Right, let's go. Germany, Julian Nagelsmann, manager. Look, international football is usually the graveyard for either elderly managers who can barely muster enough energy to provide their wife a service on Valentine's Day. You know, the type of moldy, grumpy, senile old badgers who are only about five years away from needing a nurse to help them poo. It's either the laughably old or the insufferably mediocre. The type who would not be able to command a decent job in club football. So the fact that Germany have a 36-year-old Julian Nagelsmann at the wheel Someone who's been held up as one of the great wonderkid managers in the world. It's mad. It's like if Eddie Howe, after getting Bournemouth promoted to the Premier League 10 years ago, decided to chuck his club career in a bin to become the England boss. I hope the Germans realize how lucky they are to have this young super coach in charge. Oh, it just meant how young he is. I vividly remember watching your 2004 as a child. Yeah, this guy was 16 years old that summer. Probably desperately trying to hide his creepy lad mags from his mom. Someone who wasn't legally able to watch Sin City in cinemas. Someone who probably stayed home every Saturday night watching German X Factor with his gran. So forget about diving into the rest of his backroom staff. I think this one is weird enough. Scotland, John Carver, assistant manager. I know he's been there a couple of years now. But I will never not find it utterly bizarre that John Carver is a successful coach with Scotland. You know, the thoroughbred Jordy through and through. Backroom coach. Mr. Newcastle. Less than... 10 years ago, I was telling the media that he was the best manager in the Premier League? Yeah, the man who lost nearly every game in charge of Newcastle. I like Carver. But he was accusing his own centre backs of getting sent off on purpose. He looked about as much a football manager as I do. A Lebanese dragon. This is a man who used to be the proud assistant coach to Sir Bobby Robs, essentially replacing Josie Mourinho. Yeah, since then, Carver then just turned into someone who looks like he's been fed dog treats from Alan Party's pockets. But Carver isn't just a number two. He has had a crack at being a proper football manager at the two most random clubs. Toronto FC in Canada, and Ammonia Nicosia in Cyprus. And now he's assistant to Steve Clark. Just because they were mates in the backroom team at Newcastle back in the 90s? I don't know. Am I the only one who, when they see Carver coaching at an international tournament, am I the only one who thinks that it's weirder than seeing a dog run for president? Hungary, Marco Rossi manager. Well, this is a bit odd. Marco Rossi was some hideously bang average Italian defender who mostly spent his career in his own nation's lower leagues. But he took the manager's job at Budapest Honved in 2012, hung around Hungary long enough to be given the full-time manager's job in 2018. Maybe it's not that strange, but I don't know. Marco Rossi in charge of Hungary. It is a bit weird. Switzerland, Eduardo Pera Garcia, athletic coach. Well, Switzerland take the prize for surely having the weirdest name of the Euros this summer. I mean, the academy manager of the Switzerland national team is somebody called Sven Christ. I'm sorry, Sven Christ? Above? But no, if there's any Swiss fans out there, I hope you realize you are sitting on an absolute rock star in your coaching staff. The Switzerland athletic coach is a 44-year-old Spanish guy called Eduardo Para Garcia. And yes, he does look like the friendliest bouncer in the world. The type who, I mean, if you didn't have your ID with you, he'd probably pull a free lollipop out of his pocket to stop you from crying in the street. But as look at this guy's CV. This man has been involved in football since 2007. Ah, well, he was a rehab coach for Celta Vigo, Liverpool, and Inter Milan. That reads like a chunk of Rafa Benitez's CV. I, I not too sure what a rehab coach is. Sounds like a job invented by someone to keep Amy Winehouse off the beer. But then he spent a few years at Angie Machofla, West Ham, and Real Madrid. Free actual Real Madrid. This is a guy who was imparting wisdom on the likes of Ronaldo, Benzema, Bale, Cruz, Modric. Wow! And he since worked as the athletic coach at Lille and Nice. I bet nobody realized that Switzerland were actually quietly sitting on a Champions League winning coach. Wow! Spain, Albert Luque, sporting director. Okay, this isn't technically a coach or anything. Instead, this is a management position within the Spanish FA. But I'll mention it anyway because I find it strange. Albert Luque is the Spain sporting director. You remember the big money Newcastle flop? One of the most expensive signings in the club's history in 2005 for a ludicrous 17 million pounds? That's what they chose to buy instead of Anelka. This was some Champions League hotshot enticed to the Premier League and was probably after Alan Shearer's number 9 shirt. Instead, he was given the number 19 previously worn by Titus Bramble. You know, that disaster center half who was just a big bag of scrambled egg. Luque's career never recovered from moving to Newcastle. He never ever played again for Spain. He's only ever scored two goals for them. Why is he suddenly the sporting director of his nation after a largely failed career? It would be like seeing Jack Wilshere, another sack of unfulfilled talent, suddenly becoming president of the English FA. Croatia, Mario Mandzukic, assistant manager. 
Look, the Croatian backroom team is stuffed with so many retired players. But I'm a little shocked to see Mario Mandzukic in there. I think, to me, my brain just instantly deleted this guy ever since he left Juventus to go and fail with Al Duhail. But to be fair, that was four years ago. And he has since played for AC Milan as well. It probably shouldn't be weird that he's involved with Croatia at all. But I don't know, this one's probably on me. Next, Italy, Gianluigi Buffon, team coordinator. Nothing too strange to see within the Italian coaching setup. Although, again, the management team. Absolute world champion Gianluigi Buffon has recently been appointed as national team delegation head. I mean, I'm just making up jobs to keep the legends involved. To keep and help them feel important. I have no idea what his job is. But you know what? I'm a little sad to see that he's fully retired from playing. And this just rams it home even further. I love the fact that last year, he was still playing for his boyhood club Parma in Serie B. At the age of 45, this guy looked like he was going to retire at PSG after joining them at 40. No, he had two more transfers left in him. His career reads Parma, Juventus, PSG, Juventus, Parma. The absolute symmetry. It's like poetry for the soul. That is more satisfying to look at than see the Mona Lisa hanging on the wall and chicken hut. So to see that he's now just sitting behind a desk, snacking on wine gums and pie, dressed in a three-piece suit, doing paperwork and trying to resist the urge to chat up the second tree? Ah, oh, it's a bit sad. Albania, Pablo Zabaleta, assistant manager. All right, hands up. How many of you knew that Pablo Zabaleta that was coaching at Euro 2024. Albania are hilariously random. They've got former Arsenal, Barcelona, and Man City left back Salvinho in charge. Zoman only lasted 11 games as manager of Leon five years ago. He was their version of Thierry Henry at Monaco that year. Two football legends who had humiliating 2019s, with both of them trying to manage a big dog in France. Seeing him in charge of Albania is odd. So I hear you that his assistant coach is Zavoleta. I mean, somebody needs to prepare Michael Richard because if he's covering an Albanian match on the BBC and suddenly spots his old enemy in the dugout, he'll probably instantly squeal like a pig in heat. Zapoleta, the legendary Argentina right back. What is he doing in Albania? It's so weird. Slovenia nobody. I'm not gonna waste your time. Nobody on the Slovenia staff or management team is looks weird at all. Next, Denmark Christian Poulsen, assistant manager. Yeah, nobody's really too strange to the Denmark setup either. I'll just chuck in assistant coach Christian Poulsen purely because he was an absolute horror ghost story to most Liverpool fans after his pathetic spell under Roy Hodgson. I don't think any Liverpool fans really thought that this blonde cowpat would ever be coaching at a European Championship 14 years down the line. Serbia, Katsuito Kunoshi, assistant manager. Huh? Lad, Serbia have a largely all Serbian coaching staff, but Dragan Stokovic, one of his assistant managers, is Katsuito Kanoshi, some Japanese fitness coach who met Stokovic when he was the boss of Nagoya Krampus 8 15 years ago. You know, that team which almost created Arsene Wenger in a petri dish. They also worked together in China with Guangzhou Evergrande. And now they're together with Serbia, with Kanoshi. Fair play then. He actually sings the national anthem. He is the first Japanese coach to ever be on the backroom staff for a European team. Fair play, kid. Did I, did I just call a 59-year-old kid? England, Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank, technical coach. Lads, this man was the reason I made this video. Nobody really seems to pick up the fact that Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank is on the England coaching staff as technical coach. If you had no idea who he was and just solely looked at his management CV, you would be miffed. Some random Dutch bloke with a silly name who's managed the likes of Royal Antwerp, QPR, Northampton Town and Burton Albion twice. To me, that just reads like the Dutch lines of cloth. To see him working with England now, it is a miracle because when Big Sam Allardyce was flung out of the England job after just a game, forced to quit in shame in September 2016, he wasn't the only one involved in the Telegraph sting. No, Hasselbank was named and shamed too. It was something about him requesting a fee of 55 grand to work for a fake East Asian firm. I'm not sure if any of that was true, but that, that was just the sort of stuff that was reported. He was involved in the same sting that destroyed Big Sam. Hasselbank was essentially cancelled too? It's just, I think everybody has forgotten. So to see him now being involved as an England coach, while Big Sam sits at home eating Pop-Tarts on the couch, it's bizarre. Imagine telling Allardyce back then that the other guy involved in that footballing sting, he'd get to work with England one day. What? It's bizarre. When Asabank was interviewed by the FA, he was probably praying they didn't Google his name. If he saw a newspaper from September 2016 lying around the office, he'd have probably chewed off the front page and eaten it for lunch. But forget that. Focus on who he is and he is a coup. As a centre forward, Hasselbank was spectacular. A goal machine for Boa Vista, Leeds United, and Atletico Madrid and Chelsea. Even Middlesbrough when he first met Southgate. Honestly, lads, it's Hasselbank. If he was in his prime now, he'd be worth about £100 million. He was that good. Netherlands, Nigel de Jong, sporting director. Well, there's peculiar things wherever you look in the Netherlands camp. The president of the board of directors is called Just Spee. Sounds like a character of Looney Tunes. I mean, the coaching team stinks of nepotism, considering Ronald Koeman is the manager and he just employs his failed brother as a coach. Probably just as a favour to their mum. But what is slightly strange to me is that 
Like Luke, eh? The sporting director is weirdly Nigel de Jong. You remember the X Man City midfield thug who in 2010 alone kicked Xavi Alonso in the chest in the most watched sporting event of the year and got away with it. And then he snapped Adam Ben Affleck like a Twix. I will never forgive him for doing that. Trying to deprive the world of a football magician like Ben Affleck. It's a bit like me trying to rip a rainbow out of the sky. Anyway, yeah, the guy is Dutch sporting director. Odds. Austria, Ralph Rannick manager. Yeah, this is this is strange. Austria's manager is Ralph Rannick. Someone who was at Manchester United as interim coach five minutes ago. The guy here. Klopp looked terrified of when he rocked up at Old Trafford. What makes it strange is that Rannick was supposed to be at Manchester United for many years as a long-term consultant. But because the club was such a mess, he just said, nah, I'm good. And now he's Austria boss instead. He's not even Austrian. Weird. France, Thierry Henry, under-21 manager. To be fair, nobody on the France senior team coaching staff is weird. Not at all. So I'm gonna have to dip into the under-21 stuff on the strange pick. Thierry Henry, you wouldn't assume it, considering this guy only pops up on the news when social media tries to accuse him of trying to shamelessly break up a marriage on TV. But yeah, this fella. Part of the Carragher and Richards clown show. He is actually the France under 21 boss. Despite acting like a cartoon character on TV every Champions League night. Despite having a rubbish managerial career. He is still the man responsible for the next golden generation of French talent. Oh, I don't know, lads. How would you feel if Michael Richards was the England under 21 boss? It, it's kind of the same. Belgium, Luke Benstein, assistant manager. Look, considering Belgium have recently had the likes of Thierry Henry, Graham Jones and Sean Maloney swimming around in Belgium tracksuits. Then I think they have finally calmed down from their extremely random wacky managerial appointments. But, but there's still a couple of weirdos in there. Seeing German defender Andres Hinkle in there as assistant coach is a blast from the past as I genuinely have not thought about him since he was some crummy right back for Celtic 15 years ago. But without a doubt, no, the strangest one is the fact that one of the assistant managers to Dominic Tedesco is Luke Benstead, a 34-year-old Englishman who was a match analyst for a year at Manchester United back when Josie Mourinho was in charge. And before that, he had various jobs in the Everton Academy. But now, how is he possibly qualified to be an assistant manager on the training pitch telling Kevin De Bruyne and Jeremy Doku what to do? What? Slovakia, Gianluca Saccarelli, assistant manager. Where did this one come from? Gianluca Saccarelli, who was on bang average, lower league, journeyman in the Italian lower leagues. He retires in 2012, does nothing for 10 years, and then gets plucked from absolute obscurity to become Slovakia assistant coach in 2022. And he's also now an assistant coach at Napoli, the reigning Italian champions, when he spent a decade living an anonymous life, just going to Costa Coffee every day. Uh, what? Romania, none. Uh, again, no one, no one's weird in the Romania setup. Next, Turkey, Vincenzo Montella, manager. Yeah, the most random one in the Turkish setup is the manager. Vincenzo Montella, an absolute Italian gold machine back in the day. Bozzi for Roma, he was a bit of a wet cheese packet in his short-lived Fulham stint. But after that, after being an absolute journeyman manager, floating around Fiorentina, Sampdoria, AC Milan, Sevilla, Fiorentina again, and now down with the Miaspor, it is a bit strange to see him as the Turkey boss. This isn't a nation which likes to appoint foreign managers all that much. Although really, they did have an Irish manager once. James Donnelly back in 1936. That must have looked weird. Portugal, Anthony Barry, assistant manager. This is hilarious. Does Anthony Barry have imposter syndrome? Yes. This is just some 37-year-old scouse bloke who was a nothing player for like a Yeovil and Wrexham. And yet now, in the blink of an eye, he coaches the likes of Harry Kane, Leroy Sané, and Jamal Musiala in his day job. And in the summer, he gets to tell Ronaldo what to do. This is someone we literally had in the Republic of Ireland coaching team just two years ago. And now, he's helping coach the latest Portuguese golden generation. I'm not gonna lie, I'm jealous. Czech Republic, Braddock Cherney, goalkeeping coach. Yeah, the Czech Republic goalkeeping coach is Radek Czerny, which I find strange because he was an absolutely average milk muffin for the likes of Tottenham and QPR and was only ever given three Czech caps. So in what world is he qualified to teach the current goalies what to do? Anyway, that's the video. Let me know in the comments. What do you think was the weirdest one? Let me know in the comments section below. What do you think? What do you think is the weirdest one in the Euro 2024 coaching setup? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.